Oh, cheers. 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 I got, it's, uh, <laughs> it's evening time at the uh, old COVID house. So you don't have COVID, do you? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm waiting on the results. Oh, okay. I was exposed, and I found out today I was exposed twice. Exposed twice? So, right. I was exposed uh, 13 days ago, and I was exposed six days ago. Oh, that's not good. Now, yeah, I, But I so was exposed I, to you, but that's exposure to exposure, which technically, correct. according to the... the yeah. Right. The only if you would need to worry if I come back positive. I was tested the day before Thanksgiving this past Wednesday. Uh, well, a Wednesday ago. Yeah. Um, and apparently everybody went and got tested at the health department uh, the week of Thanksgiving. Oh, of course. Yeah. And of course, the th the Thanksgiving holiday meant that the health department and testing centers were closed. So um, test results aren't coming back in two or three days. It's taking five to seven days. I'm on day five today see so, now jerry and i you know, I, first of all i should mention by the way that that's krisha uh, <laughs> and i'm frank and this is the krisha and frank show am and, i here am i here yeah and we're doing the show okay, on the show the amazon show uh which by the way if you want to buy one of these uh, i'll put the uh, the link <laughs> in the comments because i like this device they're pretty great yeah um i use it to I, uh, watch. i'm looking at a, a google home oh yeah like a nest. I mean, possibly yeah. to buy. Well, I mean, the reason is I have we have Amazon affiliate uh, things. I can put the link in for the Amazon product, you know, in the description. Yeah, just just don't say her name because you might activate mine or yours. Yes, you have to be careful of that. But I do use this to watch music videos and um, things on my Prime Video library and things like that. It's like a little extra TV around. And then, yeah. uh, old fashioned wise, we're using this uh, makeup mirror so that you can see. <laughs> <laughs> see how it's set up it's kind of odd uh so the krisha and frank show um and i want you to be well i want you to of course you can send a comment to us on on the youtube uh do follow us and uh, on subscribe to us on youtube and leave comments we love comments but also on our social yeah. media feeds everything is um uh, krisha at krisha and frank so that's us I wish that you had, like my wife and I, had gotten your test at CVS instead of the health department. Because they have right. a, um, a freebie thing. If you have no health insurance, you just check a box and they still give you the test for free. That is correct. And the thing is, I had already, when you and Jerry got tested, I had already been tested once. Yes. And came back with a negative. Good and point. And so I wasn't getting tested again. Good and point. Good I was point. told that as long as... As long as the person I was exposed to came back negative, I didn't have to get tested again. Oh, all right. To yeah. not disclose to not disclose anybody's information. Right, I right. don't know if you've heard, but sometimes the rapid test can give a false negative. Oh, Jerry knows so several people happened, that that has happened to back a couple of months ago. Yeah. So what had happened was uh, one of the people that I was exposed to had had two tests. And their rapid test came back negative, but turns out they were actually positive. So I found that out on Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So Wednesday morning, I went and got tested, not because of Thanksgiving or anything like that, but because right. I was advised that if, if somebody came back positive, I needed to get tested again in seven days. And it was seven days. Now, the other thing so, we should point out is because uh, we pre-recorded episodes and we had the Thanksgiving special and we had all of that extra stuff. I haven't seen you since Monday, November something. If uh, right, so it's been yeah. a while. It's been a, it's been a been a while since I've actually seen you in person. Um, right, it's been almost two weeks since we saw so, each other, and I was exposed after that. So I should already be kind dead of. if I had caught it from you. I should already be passed, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, it's so been I... thirteen days. It's been thirteen days since I was exposed. So and, yeah, you're fine. Okay, well then, how about that? And, at least, and <laughs> I think eight days since I've seen you. Does that sound about right? Something like uh, that. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what day it is because I've only left the house three times uh, since last Wednesday morning. Oh. Um, and that was including last Wednesday morning. So um, I'm a, almost a week at home. Oh, man. Man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, did you watch our Thanksgiving show? <laughs> I did, but I watched our Thanksgiving show more than once. 
<laughs> uh, but you know how how well I do, uh, you know, um, being an introvert. It's so good. It's it's awesome. It's, well, by that you mean you do poorly at being an introvert because you are an extrovert. I that is correct. And this like this whole COVID land twenty twenty has been an adjustment for me, and I've actually discovered I am more of an introvert than I thought that I was. Like I'm more oh, of a really? whole body. Huh. Um, yeah. Especially since I've moved into my new place and I'm here alone and I, I, oh, my house smells so good right now, Frank. How, so you can smell? I, I can smell. It's okay. Good. I've got a cough. I've got a sore throat. I'm a little congested. So you might just so have a, a cold. Yeah, you might just have a cold. Or I might just, the heat might be bugging me or uh-huh. I might have COVID. I don't know. Uh-huh. Um, but I... I made a pork roast by yourself all by myself. I put it in the crock of pot, but I seared it and then I put it in the crock pot. And as soon as I'm able to eat it, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was texting you before we filmed that I was getting ready to stuff my face. And that's because yeah. I had just had McDonald's delivered to my house. <laughs> If you had imagine, I don't know, you're you're old enough to to think when you were a child and going to McDonald's was still a thing. You know, oh yeah, yeah, you know, it was still kind of a treat. It wasn't just an ordinary. Let's just go to McDonald's. Let's go because it's right. a, you'd have your birthday party at McDonald's and you'd stack the Big Mac uh, clamshells up as part of the the birthday game activities, right? Oh yeah, things like that. Yeah. So if you had imagined, you could have told ten year old or five year old Krisha that in just a mere 30 years <laughs> we're going <laughs> to we're going to have McDonald's delivered to your house because nobody wants to go outside you know if you had told that 7 year old little Krisha riding in her booster seat in the back seat of her dad's beige Ford Taurus sedan as she munched on french fries from her happy meal and those cookies that you can't get anymore, if you had said you're going to be 40 years old. And a half. Possibly 40 and a half years old. <laughs> poss- be quarantining in your home because of exposure to a pandemic virus. You're 40 and a half and you're going to be living alone and yeah. you will have McDonald's delivered. She probably would have thrown herself out of the car door. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it did. We, we thought in the in the year two thousand, and certainly in the year two thousand twenty, it was going to be a science fiction universe anyway. You know, we didn't expect. Right, but seven year old me had big dreams, man. Big Broadway dreams and stuff. Yeah. Big dream. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what if seven year old you was told that you could do a worldwide television show over a? I don't even know how to, you would describe your iPad into my Amazon show, into my iPhone with this podcast microphone, and anybody in the world could watch it. Bean might actually watch this in England, in London, England. Hi, Bean. I'm hoping. And he'll be watching it on some other device that that is uh, magic and otherworldly. No, that is the most phenomenal thing in my brain that that I think uh, if, you know, if society isn't going to be able to react to a pandemic any better than we did, I don't know, in Elizabethan times. At least we're um, we're more technolo- technologically advanced. Now, <laughs> was seven-year-old you a fan of the movie Flashdance with the sweater off the shoulder? Is that what we got going uh, on there? <laughs> no, but you know, it's funny. I just watched um, I just watched a documentary on Debbie Allen, so maybe I'm just inspired. But this is just a really big sweater. <laughs> look, I'm wearing jammies. Okay, look, I got jammies on. I brushed it's my fine. teeth and did my hair for you. So I would. I, I actually laughed at myself because I was in there like brushing my teeth for the third time today. I was like, "What the hell am I doing? Ain't nobody gonna smell my breath." I'm well, drink fine anyway. I also brushed my teeth for this and combed my hair, put on this shirt and pants. Well, the pants I didn't put on for you. The pants I I could be doing this pantsless for all you know, but I did uh, <laughs> ha- have to go next door to next door neighbor Nancy's. Because uh, she had picked up some of our, she picked up our mail over Thanksgiving, and I didn't go get it. So she texted me like, "Are you coming over to get the mail any any day soon?" <laughs> so I thought, "Oh, I have to put on pants. 
I will put on pants and a mask and all the things and go over there uh, and pick up the mail from her. But also, uh, remember how we had so many of those delicious pumpkin chocolate chip cookies that Jerry made? And they're, they'll keep for a while, especially in the fridge. I mean, they're cookies. So I brought Nancy a few of those and told her they were as seen on TV. And by the time I'd gotten <laughs> back home, she'd already eaten some and texted me that they were delicious. They were so good, and I'm so glad that you made me take some home with me because I put them by my bedside, and every night it was my bedside treat. And they've got pumpkin in them, so it's like a vegetable. No, it's not anywhere it's, it's, it's like eating. It's, it's like eating squash. It's, it's, like, it's very healthy. Excuse me. It's very good for you. Um, <laughs> it's a squash. It's so full of it. It's just a squash. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yes, um, and I guess now we, I should probably tell you, I, I, we'll do the like commercial. Out now. I want to do the commercial for Steve's Tree Service, and then I'm going to tell you how we didn't burn down, I guess I was going to say my mother's house, but I guess now it's part mine. So we didn't burn it okay. down, thanks to some well, quick, thanks to some quick acting people. And <laughs> but some first, quick acting people or some quick acting people? Some fast, uh, some uh, some response time, some clever response time, good. a sensitive nose, a good eye, Jerry the Brave. It's got all the elements. Oh, perfect. I can't wait. But uh, we'll mention oh, that... Steve's tree service. Yes, I, mean, I got some texts from Steve. He was talking about one of the days earlier this week when we had, I guess it was Tuesday, when it was snowing. Um, Steve texts me at like whatever ungodly hour early in the morning goes, I bet you're not going to be on the podcast porch today. And I just wanted to write back to him, <laughs> yeah, because we pre-recorded it two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Little do you know, I still had on gloves and a blanket, so. Yes, it was it was cold that day. And Steve had the crew out working on Tuesday in the snow and in the cold. And he said he would rather be 90 degrees than 30 degrees. But with the wind, and he sent me a picture of one of his tree climbers up there uh, doing the job. Because there's so many trees and so many people who need tree service that they work, you know, every month of the year. They don't they don't get to close down during uh, the winter. Well, especially right now, you know, as it's getting colder and we already had our first snow and like you have to look at trees that could potentially ice and limbs when it ices and it. Oh, and, yeah. And the wind was blowing like crazy when it was snowing. So you got to look out for that. Yeah. You want to keep an eye out on the trees that might be hanging over your house or over your gutters. Uh, or just those nuisance trees, you know, like the ones on our street. We have, if if there some of these trees were gone, I should hire Steve to cut down some neighbor's trees. I would have a really nice view of the Great Smoky Mountains. I have, a, I mean, I, have, oh, yeah. I don't know if you've ever been here at the right time of day, but from my neighborhood, you've got a beautiful view of the Smokies. And uh, yeah, just, just turn some of those trees back. Because that's what Steve will do for you. They are a bonded, licensed, insured, all the things. They've got five-star ratings on um, Facebook, Yelp, Google. And you can find them serving Knox, Severe, Blunt, Loudon, Anderson, Jefferson Counties, all over the place. So call Renee, who is Steve's wife, uh, at 865. <laughs> well, she'll make the appointment for the estimate. They'll both come out. They'll tell you, give you an honest appraisal of what it's going to cost to get your work done. And then they stick to it. Um, 865-257-6214. 865-257-6214. And especially if you've got like older relatives, they are really, um, they have a real good rapport with senior citizens. And they want to make sure that those folks don't get ripped off. Like, you know. You would know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm technically a senior citizen. Because I don't, there's some discounts that I don't yet qualify for. All right. Can you join the AARP? I, yeah. Okay. I didn't. I let it. My membership run out. It wasn't worth it. It was a waste of money. Uh, anyway, I that's... mean, when I worked at Starbucks, I would have given you the senior discount. What's the age range on that? I mean, I just did it by face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know there was one. I need to go and ask for the senior yeah. discount at Starbucks because while I'm we were driving, only on coffee, only on regular coffee. A oh, regular coffee, because that's what old yeah. people drink. That's what right. I drink. Well, I, I was getting eggnog lattes up and down I-81. Oh, they were so good. Oh, oh gosh. I can't handle it. But well, well, what do you get? Um, If I go to Starbucks, which is not very often anymore, it's out of my price range, and I like my own coffee. 
I get a, a grande americano with oh yeah classic and cream. You we've actually had this conversation on the pe- on the podcast once you told me that so mm-hmm. I realized it's it just now. coffee. Yeah, and now in this time of yeah. year though, I just I I shouldn't have the eggnog lattes, and I only had them because it was Thanksgiving, and I was like okay, but I did. The closest I come to drinking a fall beverage is a tall chai latte with non-fat milk and two shots of espresso. Okay. Is it chai? So it's like is a chai, chai coffee. Is chai a coffee or a tea? It's a tea. Okay, so it's a latte made with tea instead of coffee. Well, yes, but the, the yes. chai from it's a concentrate that they use at like oh. a pump concentrate that they use at Starbucks. Okay, so it's got the caffeine. All right. Uh, sure. I don't know. All right. Well, well, I will tell you that uh, we drove um, up to, I guess, I mean, I was going to say my mother's house, but uh, at least for the time being, it's part my house <laughs> so, <laughs> until we sell it. So I, you could say, you could logically argue that I was, I stayed in my own house for Thanksgiving. You could say your family home. Family, that's what it was. I was there because it it is your mother's house, and it's always going to be your mother's house, right? And it's now your family home until we sell it as soon as possible, <laughs> and then it'll be your mom's house again <laughs> For, in memory. Because you'll be like, that used to be my mom's house. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So apparently, you're not going to say that used to be partly mine. You're going to say that used to be my mom's house. My sister said there's been some nibbles. They haven't even made any. Uh, they haven't put. They haven't contacted a realtor. They haven't put it on the market. They haven't done any of the Ooh, minor the vultures. Many of the reno, uh, minor renovations they want to do yet, but the the neighbors are already sniffing around, saying, "Oh, now but that burning the, it down was not part of the renovation process." That would be bad. You know, burning it down mm-hmm. would be bad. So my sister, I've got two sisters. I mean, would it? And, I've watched enough Italian movies to know. Yeah. Well, the one who lives there, my sister who lives there was out walking the dog and left Jerry and Frank Jr. and me to um, to our own devices. And part of it was we were going to help cook a little bit. Um, you know, Jerry was making these fun little uh, turkeys out of strawberries, pretzels, marshmallows, and chocolate. We saw a, a Facebook a picture. So, And Jerry said every one of them could have qualified for the show, nailed it, because that's how good they looked. <laughs> so you take a strawberry and you glue... Uh, little you glue. Well, you use chocolate. I guess you, you take a strawberry okay. and you dip it in chocolate, and you use it to adhere um, two miniature marshmallows to it. And those miniature marshmallows have miniature pretzel sticks in them. And somehow, when you coat it with enough chocolate, it looks like a, a cooked turkey, but it's a strawberry. <laughs> That's cool. So she I need pictures. So she nailed it on a couple Wait, of those. Wait, can I? Do you have I... pictures of those, Jerry? All right, yeah, uh, go ahead. We'll pop them in. I'll, right. I'll see if I'm I can. trying. Let's do it together. No, right, you're right there. You're perfect. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, that's where it'll go. <laughs> Nailed it. <Get> it. <laughs> <laughs> so we made some, and then the next another day we made another. She made another batch. It turned out better, but we'll we'll give you the comedy batch. Um, and the, what what was it? Excuse me, I was just yell at ask her, and she's sitting right over there. What were you cooking in the microwave? The cauliflower mashed potatoes. Cauliflower mashed potatoes, because somebody is keto. Somebody is keto, so we had to have cauliflower mashed potatoes. So this stuff. Those are so good. They give me the toots, but mwah, they're so good. So did I eat any of those? I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, so somebody is there's stuff warming in the oven. My sister has done a lot of prep work. And ordered a few things from the delivery service and cooked the turkey, and it's but things need to be warmed up in the main oven. So Jerry says, "Well, here's this microwave, and you look at it, and it's one of these microwaves that is part microwave and part convection oven." I oh guess. yeah, those are yeah, they're fancy. Right, and it's you know, but it's been there in my mother's house, and unfortunately, the the handle on the microwave door is starting to is cracked. And remember, we don't live there, so we don't know all the little intricacies. Oh, but oh no, we don't use the handle. We found out later because uh, we t- it got torn off, and you know, by accident. Oh no, we don't use the handle. You just kind of grab it around the side and, and yank it over here. <laughs> well, we didn't know that, right? Because every every house has its 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 right. little. You know, and this yeah. microwave, you know, clearly has been there for twenty plus years. It needs to be replaced, but now, well, now it totally needs to be replaced because it caught on fire. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Jerry's got the, it puts some food in there and turns it so that it's not microwaving, so that it's convection ovening. And okay. after a few minutes, you know, Jerry the Brave, with her sensitive smelling, notices something is amiss, something is not right. Something's not right. And um, so she looks in there, and it, it's kind of orange. You know, the heating element is at, on the top of it seems to be a little brighter than she expected it. So she goes oh, to open no. the door. The handle, of course, comes off. It's now discarded. <laughs> she... Yeah. <laughs> Pulls the microwave door open, and there's actual fire now, now exposed to the air, getting bigger and shooting no. flames at her. <sighs> so she no. slams slams the door shut, and then is yelling to me, "How do I turn off the microwave? Because <laughs> how do you turn? Because it's not like a timer; it's going to just keep going until the time runs out." And just just to reiterate, the person who actually lives in the home currently is, is not in the home. She's out walking the dog. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so now we're trying to figure out. So somebody is yelling, get the fire extinguisher. And uh, and so we find, somehow we find a fire extinguisher, but nobody, apparently the only people who know how to use it are Frank Jr. and me. Um, and I'm uh -huh. like, you're the engineer, you take the fire extinguisher. <laughs> you're the engineer. I... He's Jer the engineer of the fire truck. Because Jerry is also trying to, you know, turn off the thing, but it's it's not the microwave e part. It's the oh. convection part, so the controls are different. And I say, I used to live here f forty years ago. You know, literally uh -huh. when you were a, a born, I lived in that house, and I, um, uh -huh. yeah, and I will run downstairs and I will flip the circuit breakers in the kitchen until we find the one that will kill the nice. power to this heating element that is on fire. Yeah. Well, so, you can just main switch it at that point. Right. So Frank Jr. Gets the, has the fire extinguisher, and someone has zip-tied it shut, so it won't. <laughs> <laughs> so now they have to find a pair of... And it was probably as old as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now they have to find some shears or scissors or clippers oh or anything God. to cut the... Zip tie, like so that he can pull the lampoon Thanksgiving. So that he can pull the pin, and and knowing full well that once he fires that fire extinguisher, all of the food, it's done, will be ruined. It's done. And he's aware. Everyone's yeah. aware of that. So I am racing around, and of course I go down in the basement, and I go, and instead of you know, I just instinctively turn right, which was the wrong choice because I have to go three quarters of the way around the basement to get oh, to the. I, I don't. As it turns out, remember where the circuit breakers were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I find them, noticing along the way where some of the old photos were that we brought home for for digitizing. Oh, good. But, <laughs> as you're dashing, like, oh, there's the pictures. Oh, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna come back for those. So, uh, but I get there and I'm dallying, flipping, like, uh... and they're yelling from upstairs because I'm turning off lights. Anything that's this kitchen on oh, it, I, I turn off the lights. I turn off the some what, every other appliance is I'm turning off the refrigerator, you know, you name it. And finally, <laughs> I successfully turn off the microwave. Oh the, my God. I come back up. Now, let me back up for a moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> that morning, I got a text from my sister saying, are you, we went to the air, we're going to the airport to pick up Frank Jr. And then we're maybe going to stop by and pick up these strawberries and chocolate and things. My sister said, right. while you're at the store, which, by the way, was a madhouse. It was packed with people. So if I get the COVID... It was right before Thanksgiving. If right? I get the COVID, it's going to be from that grocery store, not from you. Oh, I guarantee it. Don't get the COVID. I don't want to. But um, she texts me and says, oh, by the way, would you pick up a battery for the smoke detector? So we do. I buy a battery for the smoke detector. And Frank Jr., has, who's tall, has successfully installed the new battery in the old smoke detector. And we okay. forgot about it until I come upstairs from the basement, having flipped off circuit breakers and everything. And the whole okay. kitchen is full of smoke. And the new and the smoke detector didn't detect any of it. I'm just like, nah. <laughs> it didn't want to. Because apparently the placement of the thing, it's just far enough around the, the bend <laughs> into the main hallway that the, the smoke didn't get there yet. The whole kitchen is full of smoke. So, and we had windows and doors open, so it didn't really help that it didn't back up into where the smoke detector was. 
So as soon as you cut the power, the fire went out? I did. Is that what happened? I think. All right. She says it had gone out, but uh, that stopped it from continuing. I guess they had figured out how to turn off the power. Right. Or done something. So Frank, Frank Jr. did not have to use the... Right. They had locked cut... It locked up tight. They had cut the, the zip tie. He had pulled the pin. He's got it ready. <laughs> but situation averted because we've killed the electricity to it the uh whatever they've done they've turned off the things uh right. it has it has cooled enough and now uh then meanwhile um somebody went up into the cabinet tree above the stove because they got the oven the stove the microwave went up into the cabinet uh, above there moved the cookbooks or whatever out of the way and pulled the uh electrical cord out of the wall so that Ah, oh, that's good. You know, it, no one will accidentally use the microwave again. So, <laughs> so, so the house did not burn down. Right, we saved Thanksgiving, which is which is good. And you did not ruin the food, except for what I'm assuming the mashed cauliflower was. What not happened to edible. the What happened to the cauliflower mash? Oh, they just moved it to the other oven. <laughs> it, was little, it was smoked cauliflower mash. <laughs> Because I don't think we told I don't think we told anyone that oh, that's the food that was then just they just put it on the table I think that's that's so much much more of a story than I had Thanksgiving food delivered to me on Thanksgiving Day. Well, <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. Now I was thinking about you a lot on Thanksgiving, obviously, because I knew you were you were home alone, and that wasn't your original plan. The original plan was, was to not. go uh, perform in a show that day. Um, yeah, we were supposed to open the show. It so, opened. So I was, <laughs> but I was thinking about you, thinking, well, what if on Christmas she's got no place to go? And I thought, well, she could come over here. Um, Is that all I, right? Did she come over here? <laughs> here's the thing: uh, I'm not making any plans other than right now, this moment, because. Okay. Because I feel like for the rest of the year, you can't predict anything because it's it's getting so crazy. It has been crazy, but right now it's very crazy. And my, do I say my chosen profession or do I say the, the profession that chose me? Well, it's both because uh, you can't not do it. Right. You know, so you, you found me. you found the right thing. A lot of people go through life. I was listening to. And we can do another episode about this. I was listening yeah, to yeah. Uh, my friend Christina yeah. Etter on a podcast, and she sent us a note on Facebook, which is why I listened to it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, just this whole idea of the, of these people who go through almost their entire adult lives and are not happy, and then try to make a change to write the book that they've been meaning to write, or to go do the thing. Yeah. And I thought about it. Well, I thought, sometimes you and I at least we've done the thing that we were meant to do. But I think sometimes that that you don't even realize because you know there are parts of this profession that I have chosen that chose me that I see that I could have done differently or I could have done better. Right. Or that I think sometimes you have to have like this big bubble of chaos or tragedy or something happen for you to like finally ground your feet. I guess what I mean is like Christina wanted to be a writer and wanted to be a journalist, but something talked her out of it. So she got a business degree and went into like a, um, some other, I forget exactly what she did, but I know she was a registrar at school for a while and was in the business world until the point where she couldn't take it anymore and decided to quit and for a year, give herself a year to just be mm-hmm. the writer that she always wanted to be. Even if, you know, yeah. at, whatever, at whatever peril, whatever cost, she would live in a tent. She was so intense on her vision that she was willing to live in a tent to make it happen is kind of one of her little things. Right. Yeah. And yeah. But uh, anyway, I, I'm not making any plans other than today. And then we'll see what happens tomorrow. Because okay. right now, uh, the rest of the season for the theater is up in the air for me personally. Um because I don't know what's going to happen. I yeah. don't know it because it's dangerous right now um, in the world. And so I'm just taking it day by day and I'm trying not to freak out about it or be um, what's the be upset or sad or depressed. Like I'm just trying to take it as it comes because like right now when you say Christmas, I'm like, oh, that's 24 days away. Who the hell knows what's going to happen by then? All right. Well, oh, happy December. 
<laughs> <laughs> on our next episode, it's, we've been I half. Have, yes, go ahead. I have huge news. Huge, bigger than the screen I'm on. Huge, life changing news. You could have led with that. I didn't no. have to do the. I didn't have to do the flaming microwave story. Look, that would have kept. Frank, I'm pretty. Oh, great! Now you froze up.